Hello, I'm here to reiterate and to add on to some of the points from the previous video. In this section, we will learn what is absolute uncertainty as well as how to estimate the uncertainty. We will also touch on fractional and percentage uncertainty. In the last section, we will learn to make the distinction between precision and accuracy in the context of instrument. You have learned from the previous video that due to instrumental uncertainty and procedure uncertainty, there will always be uncertainty in a measurement. Due to this, it is important for us to express the reliability of this instrument, of this measurement. We do this by expressing stating the uncertainty of the measurement in the form of range of a range of values. So we do this by expressing the reading R in a form R plus delta R, where delta R is called absolute uncertainty. There are, there are two ways, there are two rules in which you must follow when you write uh, uncertainty in this form. The first rule is that the actual uncertainty is always rounded off to one significant figure. This is because uncertainty is after all an estimation. The second rule that you need to follow is that the reading R will be expressed to the same number of decimal place as the uncertainty. This is because it makes no sense to express R to more decimal places as the uncertainty. It also makes no sense to express R to a less number of decimal places as delta R. Now we go on to how to estimate the actual uncertainty in readings. Generally, there are two forms. For scale reading, which is a single reading, the uncertainty is estimated to be half the smallest division. So, for example, on example in example 2.1, you can see that the reading R here is between 30.2 and 30.3 so in this case the smallest division for this scale is 0 0.1 half of it is 0 0.05 so by expressing R in the form of 30.25 plus or minus 0 0.05 you are effectively expressing R within the range of 30.2 and 30.3 Now you may want to take some time to try this example 2.2. So for reading 1, the uncertainty is 0 0.05 because the small division is 0 0.1. Similarly for R2, it's 21.9, 0. Note that this is 1SF. Also note that the reading R is in the same number of decimal place as the uncertainty. Okay, for last one, R3, you should express it as 22.95 plus or minus 0 0.05. Another type of reading is called what we call length reading. Length reading is when you need to take the difference between two scale readings. Later on in a further section 4.1, you will learn that when you take difference between two scale readings, the uncertainty actually need to you need to add up. So for the case of a length reading, as what you see in the video, the uncertainty for a ruler is 0.1. So this example here, the, if you want to measure the length of this rod here, you take the difference between this reading and this reading. The uncertainty of each of the reading is a scale reading. 
So the uncertainty of each of them is 0 0.05. And if and because you are going to take a length reading, the uncertainty you have to add up. 0 0.05 plus 0 0.05 to end up with 0 0.1. Next, we go on to learn what is fractional uncertainty. Fractional uncertainty in which is useful for you to do comparison. This is because you can take the you take the uncertainty of R and you divide it by the reading itself and express it as a fraction. Or you can also express it in, in terms of percentage, which is actually just a fraction with with base 100 so a very simple example if the reading is 0 0.25 2.05 cm and uncertainty is 0 0.1 cm then fraction uncertainty is 0 0.0488 and which translate to 4.9 percent Okay, for the last part of this section, we will talk about precision and accuracy in instrument. The video that you have watched also touched on this. The precision of instrument refers to the smallest value an instrument can take. For example, a micrometer rule, the uncertainty was 0 0.1, which you have just learned, CM. While a micrometer screw gauge has a precision of 0 0.001 cm. So because the micrometer has a smaller uncertainty than the ruler, we can say that the micrometer is a more precise instrument compared to the ruler. So in that sense, precision can be reflected by the actual uncertainty of the instrument. The smaller the uncertainty, the more precise the instrument is. For accuracy, accuracy refers to how suitable the instrument is to measure a certain reading. For the same instrument, let's say a meter rule, with the same percentage uncertainty, 0 0.1 cm, if you are going to use it to measure different length, say 1 cm or 100 cm, then the percentage uncertainty will be different. For the case of a 1 cm measurement, the percentage uncertainty will be 10%, while in the case of a 100 cm measurement, because of the uncertainty of 0 0.1 cm, the, the percentage uncertainty is 0.1%. So we can say that a meter rule is an accurate and suitable instrument to measure 100 cm, but it is not accurate for measuring small length like 0 0.1 cm. So accuracy for an instrument can be reflected by the fractional or percentage uncertainty of an instrument. The smaller the fractional uncertainty, the more accurate the instrument is. This is another example. In the previous example 2.3, you learned that using a meter rule, you end up with 4.9%. So to make this uh, to make to find a more accurate instrument, we find other instrument that is more precise, like a vernier calipers or a micrometer, so that the the percent fractional percentage uncertainty is smaller. So for better accuracy, we will use a more precise instrument like a vernier caliper or micrometer screw gauge to measure this length. So to sum up this section on measurement uncertainty, we learn about actual uncertainty of scale and length reading. We express actual uh, readings as R plus or minus delta R. There are two rules to follow. For delta R, it must be 1 SF. And R must be in the same decimal place as delta R. We also touch on what is percentage or fractional uncertainty. 
And last but not least, we relate precision to actual uncertainty and accuracy to fractional uncertainty. For the next section, we will touch on systematic and random errors. Thank you.